Hey viewers, welcome to another game of Schedule Pro Gamer. Today we're doing a game between Mouse Vortex as the Zerk in the top right and uh, Tomicus as, I don't know how to pronounce these things by the way, as the Zerk in the bottom left. So it's a Zerk versus Zerk, it is a best of three, this is game one and we are going to see all three games today. So I'm going to upload them as different videos because it has to be edited and blah 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 blah. But I'm going to do all three of them today. So um, I do recommend you uh, watch them in order, obviously, because I cannot spoil yet whether there are actually three games. Um, yeah, also, yeah, well, it's just better to watch game one than game two than game three because I might actually spoil some games halfway through. Anyhow, we have some overlords flying across the map because even though this is a big map, they know where the enemies are. Uh, these base, bases not used, so uh, forced cross positions basically. And we are going to uh, see a similar build from both of them. <coughs> Sorry. Just uh, building up some drones, uh, building up with some overlords on that supply. And they are pretty much equal. There's a 20 uh, uh, mineral gap between the two, which should not be a problem. So we do have an early spawning pool here, whereas the other guy is going for an early expand. And this may actually prove to be a very big change. So uh, our orange player here is going for that early expand, which means he's going to get the uh, economic advantage. But he is going to be behind on producing that <coughs> oh, sorry producing that army because um well army is basically based on well how early you can get the spawning pool because with the spawning pool you get the queens with the queens you get the extra uh, larvae so early uh, well early game he's going to have a, well this this yellow player is going to have a little more uh, well, Zerklings, because you can't really uh, get anything else. And then later, the uh, orange player will take over because, well, he has an earlier base, which means that with his queens out, uh, he's going to produce just one more spawn of, um, of extra units here. And then it equals out afterwards, of course. Well, he is going to stay, uh, stay uh, ahead in economy. The other guy is not going to stay ahead in um, uh, in army, which is why we normally see those fast expands. Normally we see the expand before the spawning pool for the very, very simple reason that the economical advantage will be kept during the entire game. The, um, the advantage from having more troops is not there for the entire game. And this is what he needs to do to make up for that. He needs to kill at least one drone because that one drone is the difference between him. Oh, and he gets it without even losing one. Oh, he loses one of his uh, Zerklings. That one drone, that was exactly the difference between them. But everything that one drone does during its lifetime, that's his advantage. And yeah, here now he doesn't have an advantage anymore because he lost the drone. The drone uh, picked up like one bit of minerals and obviously that is uh that's not good enough that's like eight minerals or something like that i don't know what they are to nowadays may actually be five i think i think they reduced it to five but i'm not actually sure about that because it doesn't seem to uh, go to eight anymore anyhow it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all we are going to see some gas coming up uh not in the natural expansion yet Bingling Nest going down and the Bingling Nest is of course going to be very strong if he can get into the base or if the defense consists of only Zerklings and well with the Carapace coming up and no Roach Warren yet it might actually pay off for him so only Evolution Chambers for now we don't have anything else except for uh, Speed Zerklings well the speed is coming up for our, um, our yellow player but here, no gas, and here there are two geysers capped with um, the extractors, of course. And still no roaches coming out, no banelings coming out. Basically, nothing is happening here. And, with, well, with the, uh, with the queens defending this base, now there is the baneling nest finally coming up. 
Uh, with the queens defending these bases, the overlords can no longer scout. And that is, of course, the strong thing about uh, Zerk versus Zerk. Uh, well, the str strong defense you automatically get from those queens. Because they have pretty decent range. And they can definitely hold off the, the queens for quite a long time. We have our first Banelings coming out. And the Banelings are going to suicide. And I'm not actually sure if that was worth it. These Banelings are going to morph just in the middle of the combat zone. And that might actually not work out for him. But, well, so far, yeah, he's not losing them. He, uh, he could have lost them quite easily, but did have a bigger, uh, bigger army out. And it seems that the yellow player is focusing way more on his army. So uh, getting that, that army out is, of course, really important. Oh, but there goes the entire group of Banelings against two Banelings. So it was four versus two, and he's now going to try to get down these uh, these banelings without losing too much for them. And oh, in the drone line! Oh, oh, oh! Only four drones lost. That could have been way worse. And this, um, yeah, this is just our, per, our our orange army. Man, that could have been way worse. But yeah, the yellow army retreating back to base. And we're going to have to take a look at this. The resources lost pretty much equal, surprisingly. But keep in mind, there are some drones killed. Five drones killed now. It's not a big deal, but it is definitely something that uh, gives you an advantage. But especially that super early drone from uh, the yellow player. The, so the yellow player killed a super early drone. And that is, um, is a really important one. That is exactly a, the most important one. And wow, the snipe on these banelings. Oh, and there are the roaches. Roaches are, of course, very strong against both banelings and zerklings. Although against zerklings, yeah, they can still lose. But especially if you get burrow, which nobody ever does. I don't really understand why burrow is very strong. Um, especially with roaches, because they get additional uh, healing then. Plus, it's, it's basically... A way to get out of the fight without having to leave the area so y you instantly get out of the fight by just well hitting the burrow key and while lots of uh, of banelings well just getting killed or well exploding i guess and we are going to continue on here with the yellow player still going for that uh, well instant victory here so going for a big army and trying to get things done right away instead of way uh, instead of going for um, for economy and this is actually going to work out brilliantly now because he has a big army and although there were three spine crawlers coming up yeah none of them will actually come up the GG comes out too much focus on the, those extra bases and well the yellow player played that way better. Just going for less of an economical build, uh, going for a big army to actually pressure his opponent. And then while he's pressuring, he builds an extra base. And by doing so, you actually invest first in army, so you get a little less from your, um, from your economy. But because you put pressure on, the enemy cannot really do anything against that. So they can't expand, and if they do expand, like we saw here, with uh, Tomicus, uh, they actually get punished for it and they lose their entire base. So anyway, hope you enjoyed and on to game number two.